I am Trudy Strobel and I am an artist of Judaic embroidery. I'm here today with the Red Cross to tell you my story. They have honored me to film this, so I, I'm, I'm very grateful. And I'd like to tell you how my life went and how the Red Cross got into my life. I was born in Ukraine, Russia, and uh, when I was a child, I had very few playthings. I did have one bisque doll which I treasured. And when I was four years old, uh, the Nazi guards came in and told us to leave, my mother and I, and we took whatever we had that was expedient, like food, and we took that along. And those, those things were put on a wagon and many people in our town uh, went, uh, had to go with us. And this was a caravan of people, but we were guarded by Nazi guards. And eventually we came to Loj. And in Loj, as we arrived, we all had to, uh, the women and children had to go to a special room and they called this Entlausung, which means we were cleansed of all the lice and it was very frightening it had a shower uh, shower heads all over and we were all naked my mother and uh, all other mothers and and children it was very very frightening for me as a child and uh, after after all of this uh, my mother had to, had to sew she was a, uh, a tailor but at this point, she was doing sewing of, of different garments, whatever needed to be done. This was in Loch, and we were in a room with a lot of other people, but this is how we had to live. And so time went by, uh, mother went to sew, and she took me along, and I helped her. I would pick things up or take things over and bring things back for her. and. Uh, but we were together, and so however length of time we were there, I don't know. And then we were told that we will be sent to another camp. And um, uh, as, we, as we were leaving, uh, the, the Nazi guards, they had their dogs, and uh, all I remember is the dog's teeth and Shine, shiny boots because I was little. And so, uh, schnell, schnell, they were pushing us into this wagon. And this is, this was a, um, a, uh, uh, an animal, um, what would they be called? You, you transported animals in them. And uh, it was cold and smelly and we were all together, but too many people in one wagon. There was uh, a pail in a corner, and uh, what would that help for all the people? You could hardly get there. A lot of people got sick, they vomited. It smelled badly, and I was so frightened, I just held on to my mother all the time. And uh, again, I don't know how long we traveled, and, uh, we were then, get out, get out, and they, we then came into a cabin, and there were beds, two beds high, and there were planks, and the, the, the beds were actually planks of wood with some straw on it, and we got blankets to cover, but we were cold and hungry, 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 and thirsty. We had nothing to drink, so uh, mother there was ordered to sew again, and I was with her most of the time and helped her to sew. But lot, many times I was by myself in the bed. Then from there we went to another camp. Again, I cannot tell you how long or where, where it was, uh, and 
then one day American soldiers came in and it was, it's all over. Everybody was happy. Whoever could still walk, everyone was like a piece of bone walking skeleton. And so we were taken out from there and the, and the, the uh, American army, they helped us to uh, walk to an area where, the, where there were trucks and we were transported in trucks to a displacement camp. But on our way, as we were walking, there were little daisies in the field and they were so pretty with the green grass. So I had to pick a few and I gave those to my mother. And so we arrived at the displacement camp and can you believe it? We got food, food and things were clean. We got different clothes and it, it just started to be such a different life. But I was always uh, serious and quiet. And so one day, Red Cross comes in, Red Cross. And they gave all the children, there were several people, you know, to hand out all the children. We got boxes, a wooden box with pencils in it and erasers. And, uh, and some children got a little toy, but I got beads, different colored beads in this box in a little plastic bag. I couldn't believe the beauty of it. This was, this was, what can you say? This is gold, this is, these are diamonds. And my mother saw the joy in my face and she said, we'll make something with them. And so she um, uh, found a picture of a goose and she transferred it on parchment paper. And then now we're the fabric, no fabric, right? But she still had her old clothes and she cut a piece from her skirt and her blouse, which was black and sewed it together and then made this nice and flat and attached this parchment design of the goose and we needed a special needle in order to get through these very small small beads and then she showed me and inserted the needle and put it in and each bead had to be done separately close together she said so it looks like a goose oh yes of course and uh, it was such a joy to work on this till all the beads were used up and so there was a little bit work left to do. She said, we will do it at another time. And so we put that away and in the meantime, we were transferred to another displacement camp near Munich and uh, I don't know the name of it. And uh, from there, we came to Würzburg and there we were given a room uh, in Amershausen, which is a small village in uh, Bavarian area. And there we were given a room. So uh, we had our stove in there, the one bed and a table. And uh, uh, it, it was so different. Just us in there, can you imagine? And so my mother and I received food stamps, and we also received some money, but it wasn't enough to exist on. So mother then started to sew for people. These were uh, farmers in the village, and there was no fabric to be had anywhere. So she, um, she turned over men's and women's coats to make them new again, turn them around and uh, she did that uh, for a long time and also sewed dresses and so forth and then we would travel sometime to visit other people where she sewed for but we always returned to Amershausen and here one day we can go to America so we had to go to Bremen and there we uh, boarded a boat or a ship, of course a ship, 
called General Han, which was an army ship. And there we also had the bunk beds, but you had, you had mattresses and you had good food on the ship. And as we traveled, it, it, the, sea, the sea was very, uh, very strong, you know, uh, because <laughs> a lot of people got very sick. And then there it was one day the captain said, Statue of Liberty is visible. So we all came on board and, and we were all so excited and to see the Statue of Liberty. And from there, we, uh, from New York, we went to Chicago. That was our destination. And mother started to work. She sewed there. I went to school and of course I had to learn English and, and uh, uh, you know, all other subjects. And as I grew a little older, I was then helping out part-time job with my schooling. And now I'm 18. And a friend of mother's, Tante Teresa, and she said, uh, Masha, do I have a young man for, for Trudy? A boy, she called him a boy. Uh, we saw each other two weeks in a row on a Sunday, and then we were married. And we had two sons in Chicago, and my husband then was transferred to California, and they then uh, continued school. I mean, they started school here in California. And uh, uh, all this time, we never, never discussed our history. My, my husband was a survivor in that he had to hide. and. I was in camps. We never discussed it. We wanted our children to have a good life, to have everything that was good in America. And so uh, when they became teenagers, then we finally shared our life with them. Then after they were in college, I decided to go back to get my education. And I went to PCC to learn nursing. And uh, I also then had a part-time job in the medical records department in a hospital and that was very beneficial for me but at this time suddenly I became very depressed I I was just totally lost I was so depressed I needed a psychiatrist and I saw a psychiatrist and he um, in time I was thinking about my doll as I was ta talking to him and then I started to make a dress like my doll and wanted to, you know, dress a doll like my doll was dressed. And as I attached the Mogendovit, I thought, why a Mogendovit? And I went and did some research in the uh, library of the Federation building on Wilshire and also the uh, University of Judaism and uh, the Wiesenthal Center, they had a very large library. And uh, I stumbled on a book by Alfred Rubens, Sir Alfred Rubens, who uh, went through the history of, of Judaic costumes, Judaic dressing. And there I learned that for 11 centuries, we as women also had to wear degradating uh, either signs on clothes or a special kind of headdress to show others that we were Jews when we were outside. And so I then created 11 dolls of 11 centuries of degradation and that took a whole year, a whole year of tears, of feeling I was in that century. I was feeling like these women and how uh, how they how they must have felt having to wear this unbelievable headdress and and um, uh, just to go out to be someone else and uh, I that was a whole year of tears and I worked myself into the present and I. My depressions went away very much, but I still, you know, 
who doesn't suffer from depression today. Dr. Sol, he suggested take it to the museum, which I did, and they immediately accepted it. I mean, I, I couldn't believe all of this. This was, now my, my costumes will be seen by people <laughs> that can learn from it. It is truly a learning tool, these 11 costumes. And it has been in the Holocaust Museum for uh, all these years. And uh, the Holocaust Museum moved several times and now they built a wonderful new museum uh, through uh, Mr. Schoenberg, who was the attorney who got that, that portrait back for a survivor here in America of um, the, uh, the, the golden dress that, it was actually, she was the niece who inherited it. And he did an impossible thing that the museum in, in Vienna, Austria, had to give it back to the family and uh, it then sold for several, uh, like over 100 million. And he, through his earnings, uh, really built this new museum. And so we were blessed and it, my, uh, my work is still there. I, I also then started to uh, embroider and use all my, my uh, physical abilities and uh, as it turned out, I come home one day from a doctor's visit and I sit down and I draw. I had never had a drawing lesson in my life and I could do a face and I, th I thought, how fortunate. Now I can actually make a plan of things that I see in my mind and embroider it and, you know, uh, make it visible. and. All of these pieces, uh, there are several that I made. I always included beadwork, which is my love. And uh, it, uh, it enhances every piece of embroidery that you, that you make. Now, the, some of my work has traveled in the world and it's traveled through several states and it is housed in temples and homes and it, they were all a labor of love and I am so pleased that someone else is enjoying something that I made and I really just concentrated on historical work and to leave and and you understand part of our history when you look at some of these pictures so uh, as it turned out, uh, uh, one day Lilith magazine interviewed me and uh, they had a very big article in their, in their magazine and it was kept and a writer put, it, put that magazine away for a future date and she composed a story based on, on me and my doll and uh, dedicated to me and she won first prize and the Wiesenthal Center had a very special thing going for her and me and I got an award for inspiration. So all of a sudden this happened. You know how, how wondrous the world is and uh, it uh, then continued when uh, a um, young woman, she, uh, she made um, a documentary about artists who are Holocaust survivors and their work to show about the Holocaust because many have concentrated on you know what happened to them like I did and she uh, incorporated my work into her her film and it is shown several times you know how the how the people were herded on onto the wagons into the wagons and uh, it, uh, it, again, when the opening was, you know, you get so many accolades, it, it, it is very surprising to me and I feel good about it. And uh, just uh, 
recently I had to uh, I had to I asked for help to find me no one can find me my name or anything and I called the Red Cross and had an appointment Red Cross and they were uh, so helpful and Carmela is one of one of the ladies that works there and Doug and uh, Carmela uh, wanted to put my story into their archives again this very big surprise how honored I am today that they're here and they're recording my story and I am so blessed it was through the beads that I started this journey of embroidery to master embroidery and to be an artist and thank you Red Cross <laughs>